Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna to be unboxing another resin. Um, we seem to be doing a lot of those lately. Um, this one's coming to us from Bluecast. And I'm really excited about this one because of how unique Bluecast approaches the whole resin aspect, I guess. They do a lot of unconventional things, which we'll dive into in a little bit. For those of you who don't know, Bluecast is a resin company that is basically dedicated to just making direct-to-cast resins for MSLA and DLP. And this resin that we are going to unbox is their brand new one called X1. Well, okay, actually, it's actually been out for a little while, but this is new to us, and um, you know, I haven't really seen it too many places, so it's new. So uh, let's get into the box. Um... So that's that. Uh, packaging's pretty decent. Um, I know that this didn't come directly from Bluecast. Uh, I believe they actually reached out to one of their suppliers, which was closer to us uh, here in Canada, and they sent us a bottle and basically probably comped them or something. Anyway, um, so this is what we've got. And ooh, that's fancy looking. Gotta say that Bluecast definitely has nice bottles. They're um, a nice size. This is gonna fit really nicely in our CW1. Um, and Oh, that's really cool. So I, I suspect that this resin requires preheating and what they've actually done, which I think is the first time I've ever seen this, and it's really cool, there's actually a temperature gauge on the side of the bottle. You know, like one of those mood things? Yeah, if I put my finger over it, like it changes color. So we're gonna have to be able to preheat this to a very exact temperature and it will then tell you what the temperature is of the bottle, which that's awesome. So like I said, this is one of their newer resins. They have a whole lineup, which um, actually I'll list for you right now. They've got Bluecast Original, LS, X5, X10, CR3A, and then the X1. And all of these resins, I feel, have been kind of like incremental steps. You know, they're, they're improving, or sorry, the next version is improving on the last one in some measurable way. I don't have experience with every single one of these resins, but um, in the past we have looked at X10 and CR3A. Both of those resins are really, really good. Um, we preferred CR3A in terms of printability. However, X10 is definitely one of the top when it comes to castability. It's just more difficult to print. And I'm pretty sure that this starts to address some of those printability issues because I see a lot of really, really high quality prints uh, on their uh, social media. Something that I noticed with some of the Bluecast products is that they are designed with casting solely in mind. Like casting quality has to be number one, printing comes second. So we have kind of a loose theory that a lot of these other companies that are putting out these castable resins are coming from more of a chemical engineering side and they're entering into the castability. I think this one has always been in the castability arena and they've never really left. So there's definitely something to be said for the R&D side that Bluecast is putting into their product. Something this company does differently than every other one is they actually include the, the option to have additives to their resin. Um, I think the most famous one that I can think of right now is with X10. You can get three different additives for it. There's one called softenizer, there's one called hardenizer, and there's one called sharpenizer. And as the name suggests, they help the resin achieve you know, a different level of printing based on what you're doing. So for softenizer, you might wanna use this for doing stone in place casting you would soften the resin so that the prongs can flex a little bit without breaking. Um, for us, we've tried sharpenizer and that really helps with detail. It doesn't do too much for making it harder, obviously, which is what hardenizer does. And I believe that's more for doing filigree stuff where it's very, very thin supports. It needs to be, uh, you know, it has, has to have some structure behind it. And with this one, I have seen one that it's called filigreeizer. Uh, they're really just making up words at this point. Uh, which I think is kind of funny. Anyway, filigreeizer is designed to make this resin print better for filigree. I suppose it might have some trouble with uh, very thin 
designs. It actually says right here on the side of the bottle, due to the high castability, the supports must be bigger than usual, 0.4 millimeter minimum. So that's very interesting. I suspect that filigreeizer addresses that problem directly. Um, I've seen more than a few of our models where the supports could be 0.4, but they're more like threads. And we're talking 0.2 mil, maybe they're a little bit thicker, but they're definitely thin. It's, it's hard to say. So you're gonna have to kind of use this according to your discretion. What kind of models are you printing? So some of the other little quirks of this resin that I can see on paper anyway. Um, so it does require preheating, which they've, I can't get over that little heat bar thing. That's just, that's awesome. That should be on every single resin that requires preheating, if you ask me. Um, the other thing it requires is a very specific alcohol for washing the prints after they're printed. Um, that requires ethyl alcohol. And what actually happens with this process that I've observed is these prints come out a bright, not bright, they come out a very verdant green. So it's very, very foresty. And what you do is you wash it in ethyl alcohol. Um, I can't recall the exact amount of time that you wash for. I think it's around 15 minutes, uh, which is a lot longer than many of the others. And it actually turns that green into like a bone white. And when it achieves that color, you know that it is also fully cured. So it's actually doing a chemical curing process. This, this resin just flips everything that is normal about the industry on its head. And I really approve of that because, you know, why is things the way they are? We don't know. <laughs> on their website, it's actually stated that this is a meltable resin, which, in other words, which to me means kind of like wax. It's going to turn into a fluid and drip out the bottom of the flask during burnout. Um, they state that if your burnout cycle, for example, is about 1,350 degrees Fahrenheit, about 750 Celsius, um, the resin is guaranteed to be completely evacuated from the flask by 680 Celsius. So I guess it has a much higher melting temperature than wax, but it still turns into a fluid, which means that there is zero chance of thermal expansion, which means that these designs should be really, really good. Like there should be no stone setting breakage, um, especially with, if you, if you drill through a stone setting, you've got like a little, you know, half a millimeter circle or cylinder to define that stone setting. It won't break off because it can't, there's no expansion. This resin also works with DLP and monochrome LCD printers only. So there's definitely um, a correlation, I guess, with the photo initializer and the castability, something like that. I'm not a chemical engineer, but you have to have a monochrome LCD if you are intending on printing with this resin. For us, we're actually still waiting. Just, so, just a heads up, we're gonna be reviewing this obviously, but it's gonna take a little while because our Prusa SL1, uh, if you didn't know, just got its upgrade, the Prusa SL1S. And we've ordered the upgrade, but uh, it's gonna take a little while to get here. We've also ordered the Elgu Mars 3, which is gonna take a little while to get here as well. So we're gonna have to sit on this for a little while, but it's gonna be good in the end. And I guess the last thing I can tell you about this is um, if you ever have any trouble with their resins, they have a very active Facebook support group where they have you know direct company people posting on their forum, basically, uh, addressing all of the problems that you could have. So it's, it's really good. I mean, it, maybe it's a little bit more difficult to print with. There's definitely a little bit of understanding that you have to come to with it, but they're there to help, which I, I think is great. So that all said, I wouldn't consider this a beginner-friendly resin, but if you're in the casting space already and you're just trying to try things out, I would rate this among the top resins. Now, obviously we still have to test it. So that's just kind of like a, a little opinion about the overall brand uh, and our experience with it so far. So that's all for this video. Really looking forward to working with this resin. Um, if you are not, please subscribe so that you don't miss out on that review. And I will see you guys in the next video.